Hey, thanks for watching Revelations. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, the executive producer and your show host. This is a series about evangelism and discipleship, and we've been highlighting ministries all around the country that are serious about doing just that, demonstrating the gospel. And today, we're in Beverly, Kentucky, visiting a ministry called Redbird Mission. And with me is the executive director, Dr. Taylor Collins. Dr. Collins, thanks again so much for letting our teams hang out with you guys for a couple days. Well, we are honored to host you and uh, Revelations Ministries, and we're very happy to be able to talk about Jesus Christ and the ministry of the United Methodist Church here in uh, this remote area of Appalachia. Amen to that. You guys have been busy for a while, so tell me a little bit about the history, when it all started. And, yes, sir. Redbird Mission is a project of the United Methodist Women of the United Methodist Church. Redbird Mission has been here since 1921, serving the people in this isolated area of the Appalachian Mountains. That's awesome. That's, I understand you guys have some different programs and, and place, and, and you've been doing it a while, so uh, quite an amazing team. Talk to me about some of the programs in place. Our largest project is our school. We have an early childhood education program that serves three and four year olds. We have a school that uh, serves kindergarten through grade 12. And uh, that school is a wonderful institution of learning. We teach Christianity. We try to develop leaders for the Appalachian Mountains and beyond. Mm -hmm. It is really important for us to train up these young people in the Appalachian Mountains to help them to leave these mountains at least for a while to get education. Uh, we encourage them and help them with financial aid to attend universities, to become trained. And we teach them all along that they have an obligation to the people here. They should either come back here or they should seek to serve the poor in some fashion. Our motto at the school is enter to learn and leave to serve. Yeah, well, we know that education is the key to ending poverty, right? And overcoming poverty. Yes, it poverty. is. Education is the key. Well, praise God for that. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some of the staff and supporters of the ministry so you too can see how God is using Redbird Mission to uh, reach this community for Christ. Stay tuned. The heartbeat of the ministry is how to translate the love of Christ into the service that we have to do for them. Uh, sometimes we get busy with the service and forget about sharing the love of Christ. The heartbeat of Reverend Mission to me is the people. It's the community. Everybody just, this is a giving place. These people up here, they're, they're not out for themselves, they're out for the mission. They're out to help others. Most of southeastern Kentucky is a depressed area as far as uh, employment as far as uh, life as a whole. The mission reaches out and touches a lot of families, a lot of individuals uh, through education, through uh, ministry, through uh, just every little thing uh, throughout the day and throughout their life. What we're about and what our vision is, is we want to build Christian leaders. We want to give the children in these rural areas an opportunity to have an excellent education with faith built in and throughout uh, the curriculum. The heartbeat is the education for the children and taking care of the elderly people in this area. The mission uh, itself has been here for the people of the area, uh, I believe since about 1921, and it's just been a very great addition to this community. I feel that the vision for Redbird is very uh, much into sharing the word of Christ to the people. Uh, a lot of the people uh, know about Christ, but they don't always know a, a personal deep relationship with Christ. And I think this is where we can reach the children, reach the families, and uh, help them in their becoming the people that God wants them to be. 
Our community is um, a very poor community. Clay County has 34% poverty. So we're working with families, we're working with individuals to meet basic needs through community outreach. So that's food, clothing, shelter. What we're trying to do is to, is to show Christ to the people in this, in this area. And a lot of them have not had all the advantages uh, of, of the outside world because of the lack of transportation and their low income. And uh, it has been, uh, we've come in mainly to, to bring the gospel of Christ to them. Working here at the mission, you get to witness to people, you know, because some places you're not allowed to even mention the Lord's name. But here we can mention His name and, you know, tell people about Him. And I'm so thankful for that. Sharing the gospel on a daily basis is, is, is a privilege uh, anywhere we are, and in particular at the mission. Uh, the kids are very, children are very receptive. Uh, the adults and parents that we're able to visit with and share with are very receptive to the gospel. And, uh, you know, the Lord will open a door that no man can close, and He'll also shut that door that no man can open. The vision I see is empowering people locally around, um, aiding them in bettering their self, helping people that can't help their self, and just trying to increase the quality of life here. Thanks for continuing to watch Revelations. Again, it's a series on evangelism and discipleship. We're in Beverly, Kentucky, visiting the Red Bird Mission. With me, the Executive Director, Dr. Taylor Collins. Dr. Collins, let's talk about evangelism, sharing Christ. How are you guys doing it here in the community? Since 1921, tens of thousands of missionaries have come into these mountains, and particularly here at Red Bird Mission, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ the love, the caring, the concern that Jesus has for each and every one, and that it was His blood that uh, brings us to, back to the Father. Amen. And uh, so we teach that from a very early age, and we focus on it continuously every day through devotions, training, in our witness, the lives of the missionaries who come here through the church, show the people here how to live a Christ-centered life. And it's a demonstration, isn't it? You guys It's are... a demonstration. It, it provides a model. And most folks who come in here are people who really have a love for Christ's people, God's people. God admonished us throughout the Bible. And Jesus Christ's basic message is care for the poor. That's why he came. He said that's why he was came, to preach the gospel to the poor, to help the prisoner, to help those who are downtrodden, to help those who need help. And Christians cannot just live their own lives separate from serving God's people. Well, you mentioned that. I mean, I know that's your motto. Talk about that, because Jesus said to be the greatest among you, you must be a servant. So while you're serving, you have opportunities to share the gospel. So what's your motto here? Our motto here is for our school is to enter to learn, leave to serve. And we are trying to show through our own lives, the folks who work here at the mission and the teachers in the school, that service is very important in Christianity. Amen to that. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews and show you what it looks like to serve the body of Christ and to earn the right to share this gospel. Stay tuned. Well, we have uh, a devotion period each morning before school starts. 
We have a, a longer chapel on Wednesdays. Then we have uh, special assemblies when we have uh, special speakers that come in. And a lot of our staff export uh, our program to folks around the nation by uh, going to speak at churches and uh, uh, other uh, places that we want to get the message to those people. In demonstrating the gospel, we can uh, teach within our classrooms. Um, we can share what God has done in our lives and we can encourage the students into having a relationship with Christ. I'm here, I'm teaching these young kids, um, giving them their fresh starts, their seeds of faith. And I'm so thankful that I started getting it at seventh grade, they're getting it at kindergarten. I'm just so glad that, that I'm here to pray with them and helping them grow in their faith and to uh, I think we see this at school, especially this year, we've been working on scripture memory and every class learns a verse each week that they recite in, in chapel. It has a definite Christian vibe here. I mean, everywhere you go, you, you really can feel the love of the Lord. I mean, it's through the staff, through the, all the faculty, through the students. We start young. We start teaching the students when they're in kindergarten, preschool actually, uh, about Jesus about the Bible, about uh, Christianity, and hopefully that's going to influence them as they grow older to take the right path. Discipleship means to me is that you go and you spread the word to the people who don't know it and help them try and get saved. Uh, I see that uh, we are the hands and feet of Christ and that if anybody can tell people about Jesus, we can do it by our actions. And then if the opportunity affords itself, then we can also tell them how we feel about it and testify to what Christ has done in our lives and how much He has to offer those who are willing to accept that love that He has for them. The reason we're here is because He loves them. I think a disciple is a follower of Christ. And to be a follower of Christ, you have to tell people about Christ. Redbird is a support system for that. It's, it's like a second church family. Discipleship is very important. Uh, we start, in, even, even when we're working with the pregnant and parenting families, uh, bringing in the message, uh, bringing in Bibles, uh, witnessing so that they can share that as a parent with their children. No organization is perfect. No Christian organization is perfect. But we have an opportunity to lift one another up in our imperfection, pray for one another, uh, hold each other accountable to what the Lord wants encourage each other to grow. We're all at a state of growth, you know, where we are in our, and I'm talking children and staff and faculty, you know, we're all on our journey, but we're all in one accord that the Lord is number one. I just, I just hope everybody gets to meet the great message that God gives every one of us. He gives us a good life with Him and we can accept that. We can accept Him because when it's, time we can we can have a gift and acceptance to go with him Well, thanks for continuing to watch Revelations. It's a series on evangelism and discipleship, and that's what we're talking about next is discipleship. With me is Dr. Taylor Collins, the Executive Director for Redbird Mission here in Beverly, Kentucky. So discipleship, learning how to follow, how do you guys uh, approach raising up tomorrow's Christian leaders? First, we have to be biblical in our teachings, and we have to be Christ-centered, and we must seek ever to be like Christ to attend to the poor and those who need help. This ministry provides an opportunity for United Methodists and Christians across this country to give to a worthy ministry where every dollar will be spent as designated by the donor. And we provide a magnificent means for those who cannot be missionaries 
to support missionaries, Christ's missionaries here in the mission, this mission field in Appalachia. Well, that's what Paul said. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. He went from church to church, bringing gifts from one church to the other. Yes. And uh, he showed us how to do it, right? So he you guys learned a lot from that. It. Yes. And I love 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, you know, train faithful men so they can go on and train others. And uh, that's the model you really have, especially at the really? school. Yes, sir. And uh, so an avenue for Christians to serve, Christians to give, Christians to pray for us. We need prayer. This recession has touched us in a great way, and it's very difficult now for mission projects. And so we continually depend upon the Lord to meet our needs. But the Lord is here. I feel Him. That's why I came back. That's why I came home to serve my people. The Lord touched my heart and my mind and brought me to Redbird to do this. Amen. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship and some of the programs that lend itself up to raising up Christian leaders for tomorrow. Stay tuned. We got the Grow Appalachia program. It's funded through Paul, John Paul DeJora, and we take 55 families. We aid them in gardening, provide them with plants, seeds. We push for organic gardening and uh, heirloom seeds, try to make it self-sustained. It empowers them. You know, a hand of food, a hand of mouth food is, is something else that they really like at. Community projects that we have are various and, and quite a few with people in the community, meals on wheels and, and just health issues. and building and, and uh, our work camps. There is so many needs. I know in the clothing program, you know, we need we need clothes, you know, good used clothes. And, you know, people comes in and they've got a program that if they get their house burned up or, you know, some kind of tragedy happens, they come and they give them furniture, you know. We keep so much furniture set aside for that. I'm a, a My Health Outreach Worker. I have 22 families that I currently visit. I go out once a month and I provide services to them. I give them uh, information on different uh, areas that their child is developing in. I take out different materials every month as their child grows to zero to 36 months then they phase out of the program. I'm just, I'm thankful that I got to be in this program. Um, I really like uh, the lady who comes to my house and um, she's real friendly and nice. And <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm, I hope that other mothers out there who are in need of things that they can find this program and, and be on it. Well, we work camp out, and we, you know, the work camp, they go out and help a lot of my elderly people. If they couldn't stay in their homes, they they not can't afford to fix their homes back up. And so the work camp's able to go out and help them. Redbird Bishop came along just in time for me when I was desperately in need of help, and they they came to my rescue. One thing about mission is that you have to have a training ground for mission. People have to find a place where they can touch mission, and oftentimes a more comfortable setting allows them to want touch it and once you touch it you want to look for it over and over again it's it's a wonderful thing and so one of our gifts back to the church is to offer people an opportunity to be a part of other people's lives we reach out across the country for prayer support for for the people in this area not only the people but us as people that are here to help in the school right now we serve four different counties the children from each one of those counties have a opportunity to go to a public school uh, the buses go right by their homes, just like ours does. But I believe that their families choose to send them to Redbird Mission School because it's a Christian school. I chose Redbird because it seemed like a good Christian school and I just felt like I should be here. It's a really good school and it's a place to 
you can be yourself and just be free about God and just have a, be a school as a family instead of just as a school as a family. I hope everyone will consider the message that the Lord has laid on them and I hope everyone will be a Christian. I just think that the best way to experience this place is to really come and just seat yourself. Thanks again for continuing to watch Revelations, and we hope by now you've had a few. God is still working, and He desires a part for you to be playing in this body of Christ, being His hands and His feet and His voice. Here at Redbird Mission in Beverly, Kentucky, I'm talking with Dr. Taylor Collins. Dr. Collins, I know by now our viewers are just amazed at all the different programs you guys are doing and may get that nudge to get involved. So what would be the first couple steps for someone to, uh, to get involved in, in what God's doing here? We would like, first of all, for folks to pray for us. And then, if they're moved to do so, to give to our ministry. And if they have talents that they can share, we would appreciate that too. We have folks here from numerous denominations that work at Redbird Mission. We depend upon, at the school, we depend upon Christian teachers to volunteer here. So if folks wish to help us, they can provide of their time, their talents, and their treasures. You have a big campus here too, so there's always something that needs fixing and something to do, right? There's a place to plug them in. We love visitors, and we have numerous church groups who come here to work, both in the community, helping people who need their roofs repaired, their porches repaired, to put in uh, bathrooms, to help people who need help keeping their homes up. A little sweat equity. A little sweat equity for the <laughs> Lord. Amen. And uh, then we need people to help us here at the mission complex to come and help us upkeep the mission property. We depend upon folks in the general church to come to do that. Well, that's pretty amazing. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some of the staff and volunteers and, and talk about ways that you too can get involved here at Redbird Mission. Well, you can get involved. All you have to do is if you want to come and help us, we accept volunteers here at the school. And of course, if you can't come volunteer, you can pray for us, pray for what God's doing. We have many opportunities for volunteers to come and work, and many, many people do. In fact, we probably couldn't operate this school without the, the volunteers that we have. Anybody in this community can come up here and their time is valuable to us because Worst, you know, we, we go out and we do our job, but there's certain jobs that people don't see behind the scenes that need done. We have a, a different opportunities to come and, 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 uh, and be a part of Redbird Mission School through our work camp, which is week-long times when they'll come into our community uh, and get to make a difference for families. Uh, if you feel it on, uh, in your heart and on your mind to come in and help, or come in and visit and see what's here, then uh, I think you'll see the work being done here is work for God. The main thing is, is of course, prayer, that people can pray and ask God's direction in, in the work that is being done there. And then also in giving, um, they're sending their money support to the people who are working here and also just for the work of the mission is going on. Volunteer is a big thing. Um, funding is a big thing. Just, just anything that can be give is, is a big reward for this place. First of all, I can pray. We really need the prayers of God's people in order to, to minister here. And uh, that is one way people can help. They can give and we truly need the financial help because it costs a lot of money to, to run a private school and, and to do the work that we do here. And so every little bit they send can be used for help. The importance of support, whether it be prayer support, financial support, um, building material support, uh, is essential for us for survival. Um, we need 
we, we covet uh, prayers and financial support. If it wasn't for the volunteers, they couldn't make it either. I thank God every day for the volunteers that come to the Redbird Mission, give up their time and their families and leave their homes to come here and do what they do. It's so important. To learn more about Redbird Mission, contact us at our website, www.rbmission.org, or call us at 606-598-3155. Well, I want to thank our viewers for watching another episode of Revelations. And Dr. Collins, thank you again for uh, letting us meet about 20 interviews. And uh, I saw a lot of staff that I didn't even get a chance to talk to, but they all had smiles and, and the joy of the Lord was just uh, radiating from their, uh, from their hearts of service. It's an amazing place. I want to uh, thank the United Methodist Women for their support and their faithfulness to this ministry. I want to thank friends from across the country who donate to Redburn Mission to help us provide Christ's ministry here in the mountains of Kentucky and southeastern Kentucky. I want to thank Revelations Ministries for helping us to communicate our mission. Well, that's our joy. That's, we're like God's PR department. We're just pointing the camera at what He's doing, you know, and, and He's certainly working through you guys. He's here. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take this opportunity together to pray with our, our viewers watching. And we'll touch and agree and ask God to uh, take the ministry to the next level. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for being our God and our Savior. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, dying on the cross for us and being raised from the dead. And you're seated at the right hand of the Father and you're coming back again. Amen, Father. And we thank you for pouring out that Holy Spirit that lives in our heart that empowers us and equips us to be your servants. And I pray as we humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you would use us for your glory. I pray for the Redbird Mission, the board members, the staff, the volunteers, the school, the students. Lord, that you would continue to keep your hand of protection and provision on this ministry. And that you would help uh, use the body of Christ around the world to co-labor with this ministry. To, to preach the gospel here locally, regionally, and globally. So Father, we pray for... Uh, Again, your wisdom and your guidance as they move forward in your grace and mercy. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus. Well, thanks again for watching this episode of Revelations. And until our next episode, may you and your families be blessed.